So many people ask me what I do to make my realistic textures or what I do to get the smoothest possible camera animations. Well, today I'm going to show you exactly that. I will go over how you can create super realistic materials quickly. I will show you how you can get the smoothest camera animations in Blender. And as a bonus, I will also tell you where you can get tons of free assets. Everything in this video will be done using free software. And to show you the power of the workflow, I will try to make a whole animation in just 5 minutes using all the tips that I talked about. So let's get into it. To explain my texturing workflow, I've imported this sci-fi generator model. Okay, the first thing we need is an ambient occlusion node, which doesn't do a lot on its own. But using a color ramp, we can make the blacks way stronger. And it already kind of looks like there is some dirt in the crevices of the model. But now my AI generated textures come into play. You can get them totally for free from the link in the description. I made these using Midjourney. Turns out if you type dash dash tile behind your prompt, the image will become seamless and can be used as a texture. You can obviously use them as standalone textures if you plug them into the roughness or the bump of your shader. But in combination with our little ambient occlusion setup, these textures become incredibly powerful. If we take a mix node and set it to color, we can mix these textures together. But as you can see, the image is totally stretched and not seamless at all. Technically, you could just UV unwrap the model, but where we're going, we don't need UVs. If you have the free node wrangler add-on enabled, you can just hit Ctrl T with your image texture selected to add these two nodes. If we now use object instead of UV coordinates and set the projection mode from flat to box, we can first of all get rid of all the texture stretching. But we can also get rid of all the seams by dragging on the blend slider. When I first found out about that feature, my mind was completely blown because I always used Substance Painter for that in the past. But the AI grunge texture is still not really interacting with the ambient occlusion. That's why we have to set the mix node to color burn and maybe do some adjustments with a color ramp. I really don't know know what it's doing exactly, but it just perfectly merges these two textures together. To make it look even nicer, we can mix in a second of our AI textures using the multiply blend mode. Now we can use a color ramp to make it colorful. And we can also use the texture as bump using a bump node. Setting up the node tree took me about 5 minutes, but if you're too lazy for that, you can just download the node tree that I made from the link in the description. You just need two of the AI generated textures, and if you see stretching, make sure you're using object coordinates and box projection. These two sliders then let you dial in the amount of dirt. If you see repetition in the texture, you can play a little bit with the scale on the mapping node. And again, we can use the same texture as roughness or bump. Another great use case is if you already have a PBR material of any kind as well as a dirt material. If you mix them using a mix shader and plug the texture we made into the factor, you can get the most beautiful and adjustable materials ever. You don't need substance painter anymore. Okay, but let's be real, no one cares about the materials if your camera animation sucks. Don't worry, I'm here to help. I've even set up this hyper-realistic scene right here. Okay, first we need a camera, and what I also like to use for my camera animation is two different empties. It doesn't matter which kind of empties, but it's easier if they're not the same. The first empty is going to determine what the camera is looking at. So with the camera object selected, go into the Object Constraint Properties tab and select the Track 2 constraint. You don't have to worry about any of these settings, just use the eyedropper tool to select one of your empties. Now the camera tracks the empty and we can put it wherever we want the camera to look at. So basically animating the location of the empty lets us control the rotation of the camera. And the coolest part is that we're still free to move the camera wherever we want without destroying the whole animation. So we can just add a simple animation to the location of the camera and suddenly we have a very smooth but complex camera move. And we can actually just keep animating the camera and the empty. But something you may notice is that in some places the camera movement isn't completely smooth. But we can obviously fix that. First open a graph editor window. If you don't see your graph, go to view and frame all. To smooth the keyframes properly, we have to move the timeline player 10 to 20 frames behind the last keyframe and press I and available. Now hold down shift and alt and press O at the same time. Then press alt O like a hundred times. Trust me, that's actually how it works. I don't know who invented these shortcuts. Make sure to do that on both the camera and the empty that you're tracking. But I promise you the camera movement will be the smoothest it's ever been. 
Okay, but no animation looks good without a blurry background. So now we're gonna use the second empty to make the camera focus on whatever we want. So enable depth of field in the camera properties and select the empty with the eyedropper tool. So it lets you control the focus. Now we just have to animate the position of the empty, kind of like the empty we animated before, but it doesn't have to be that smooth. Oh, and as a very last thing, I like to use the Shakeify add-on by the one and only Ian Hubert. It's totally free, but it lets you instantly add pretty nice camera shake to your animations. So this is what the final animation looks like. Okay, now let's talk about the free assets. Most of you guys have probably downloaded a model from Sketchfab before, and you've most likely also heard about the CC0 models on there. But have you ever actually spent the time to look through all of these models and to appreciate how many high quality free assets they have? I mean, it's insane. CC0 means that the model is completely free to use for anything, even for client work. They have all kinds of different stuff that's uploaded by museums. They have whole landscapes and even birds. I mean, check out how good these birds look. All right, as I said in the beginning, I spent only five minutes on making an animation to show the power of this workflow. I imported this owl model and the landscape in the background for free from Sketchfab. And then I modeled this abstract shape out of a cube. Then I used my dirt generator to make it old and weathered. Oh, and I made it metallic. Next, I made a simple camera animation using exact exactly the workflow that I showed you. For the lighting, I used an HDRI. Well, and that's basically it. I have a Discord server, so if you have any questions about anything I talked about, you can just ask me over there. I'm pretty active in voice chat.